relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But if it gets you better, you, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good, but this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody, I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. This is a special show, y'all. We got a special guest in. First and foremost, how you doing, Harry? You out in Cali, baby? Yeah, man, you know, having a, you know me, I'm out oh, here shit. having a tough time keeping these gators down, even on the West Coast. It is, it is. You got yeah. sand on your gators. That's yeah, crazy. Hard. Dre, you ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. All right. I want to just say my, I want to tell my, talk about my guests a little bit. This dude, actor and uh, a, a budding comedian as well. Uh, start been doing a little comedy here and there. You may have known him from uh, Bronx Tale and and Jungle Fever and and uh, all kinds of things. Give it up for my boy Joseph D'Onofrio. Give it up for Joseph. <laughs> What's up, Joey? How you been, man? I've been great. Thank you for that awesome introduction, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. It's good. I miss you, bro. We, you know, just when your your comedy career started uh started taking off, that we got hit with the COVID nineteen. I know, I know. I'm doing a show on Zoom, July twenty fifth. Okay. All right, I'll tune in. I'll check it out. I'll definitely check it out. I got you know, it'd be dope to dope to check and see how you're doing and everything and what and what, how the growth is. Yeah, I finally got a set, man. I got fifteen minutes to count. <laughs> And I'm learning right. how to ride the laugh. I'm learning <laughs> about stand up, my man. It's All right. a totally All right. different monster than acting in a film or acting in comedy. Oh it's yeah, yeah. So different. Yeah, it is. It is. It's different, and it and it's so. One of the things I, I like about it is, you know, cause, you know, I've done my share of acting here and there, and and I love like it's it's like a weird thing that once you once you do. Once you do your scenes, right, you do 10, 20, 30 takes, reverse it, whatever, over the top, the wide angle, whatever. But you're always, after you do that stuff, you're, um, uh, you're, you're, um, how should I put it? It's over? Your subject, your subject, your subject to the editor. To what the editor gives, so you 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 know you have no control over it. So once you do whatever you do, you 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 release it, and then you got it. You don't know what it is until it's all over with. Where with stand up, you have a you have an infinite control right at the moment. You're you're talking, and the audience is feeding back. It's a different kind of thing. Yeah, I love it, man. I love interacting with the audience. That's my thing. I've been working on, you know, talking to the audience. Yeah. But I don't like I don't like putting down the audience. I like to bring up right. the audience. Like I tell people, right, they right, look right. Good. I don't say, "Oh, you're fat, yeah. ugly, you're this, you're that." I tell them they look yeah. good. You gotta, you gotta I'll leave that. that for me. You gotta <laughs> leave. <laughs> Andre doesn't you gotta even wait it. to. Andre doesn't even wait to get on the stage. He'll do that on the subway. Yeah. He you're does fat, it in the green room. You ain't nobody. <laughs> you ain't. You ain't. You ain't never was shit. You ain't never gonna be shit. Uh, <laughs> all in good fun. My heart's well. All you know? in good fun. <laughs> Your heart's in the right place, right? When you're calling right somebody place. an idiot. So, it's always, so. Uh, what was the what was the first film you did, Joey? First, first movie big I did film was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Really? Fuck yeah. 
And then after that, I did Goodfellas. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I, uh, you know, when, uh, so were you, were, did you train for acting or did you just, just get into it? You just had a look and just got into it. I was a break dancer. And really? I, I, I got lucky, basically. I did a couple of commercials break dancing. Uh -huh. and, and my agent was like, I had a commercial agent. She was like, you want to go out on movies and TV shows? I was like, yeah, sure. So I auditioned for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm. And they were looking for a hoodlum. Uh -huh. was like 17, 18 at the time. I wow. got the part. And then Goodfellas, they were looking for someone that looked like Joe Pesci. Right. So, you know. Played I love Joe Pesci, so you know. Yeah, but you also you played the, the young Joe Pesci. Yeah, in Goodfellas, young Joe. That's Pesci. dope. That's dope, yeah. man. Um, did when did you actually think uh, that you were that you were an actor? Like, when did you call yourself an actor? Like, because for me, um, you know, I was a stand-up comic all the time. I was a stand-up comic, stand-up comic, and then I didn't start. I did. Uh, I did the second season of Blacklist. And I did scenes with James Spader. And once I did the scenes with James Spader, I was like, all right, now I'm going to call myself an actor. I started calling myself an actor, I think, like 10 years ago, to be honest with you. And how long, you, how long have you been doing it before you, did, before you considered yourself an actor? I mean, I've been in the union since 84. So wow. 15 years. Yeah. I basically was acting. It was just like a job. I didn't really know really much about it. I just got the job. Basically, I was playing myself in different situations. Right, 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 right. I, right. I get what you're saying. It's just like, you you know, like, I, I had a respect for actors that I didn't think I had. Like, the same way I have a respect for comics. And, and, and the thing about, like, Harry, here's the thing about Joseph. Joseph started doing comedy a little while. But he, he respects the craft. He respects yeah. the people that do it. And he wants to be better. And that, and, and that, that a is a... Deal. Especially when you have a following. Because, it, you know, like, when Joseph does his shows, his, people, his fans love him. They come out to see him. I've done a couple of his shows where they've actually, you know, where Joey's actually asked me to be on, like, yo, I want you to do my show and stuff like that. But he, he's a dude that looks at, you know, like, like Dre's like that. Dre is the young dude, but he's got those old school tendencies right. where he, he respected the, the craft and the people that came before him and, and right. wanted to learn there's, and be good. Joey's like that. There's nothing I worse respect than everybody, man. That's yeah. how I live my life. Respect. Yeah. There's nothing worse. Respect. Nothing worse than a guy be, who's you know? getting into comedy, just like, or somebody who just gets into it as a second thing, and they don't respect it, and they are trying. They to got take... merch at the open mic. Oh yeah, merch <laughs> they got merch at the open mic. <laughs> oh my. Well, you know God. what it was? I've been on so many sitcoms. Like I did a couple of sitcoms in my life, and I always like making people laugh. And people right. always told me you should do stand up, but I never right. had the opportunity. So when the opportunity came around. I jumped on it, and you know, little by little, it's like the acting. Like I said, I didn't start acting till ten years ago. But basically, when I was acting all those years, I was learning so much from just working with Robert De Niro, Howard Ramis, Joaquin Phoenix, or whoever I was working with. Wow! And that's how I did it with the stand-up. I watched yeah. you. I watched a lot of people that do it, and yeah. I learned from them. And I watch, and and you know, I I take things from other people. Right, I mean, right. not their jokes. But just the way they yeah, 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 but yeah, but I mean, you got to learn it. I mean, you know, we, when you approach acting, you're just like, okay, this is who I am. You're just playing a, ver like you said, you're just playing a version of you. But the the craft of the the craft of acting, like I, I, you know, like I don't even remember what year I did I did Blacklist, but I was like, if I can if I can sit across James Spader and go hold my own. I'm like, okay, I'm an actor now. You know what I mean? I, it, but, yeah. I, but I wouldn't even call myself that before because you just you don't want to be disrespectful about, you know, about the craft of people who have dedicated so much, you know, to, to do it. You know what I mean? And I kind of, like, like, I was like you. I was a commercial agent, and they were like, yo, we need a big dude to play a bouncer. Or something. And, and that's how it, you know, kind of happened, you know? Yeah, well, ever since, like I said, 10 years ago, I started taking it seriously and I started branching out and doing different things besides myself. Like right. playing a geek, like playing a dentist, right. or whatever. Now, I'm, my next project I'm doing, I'm playing a uh, drag queen in this thing all mobbed up. Really? 
Really? Yeah, a gangster on a TV show called Gravesend that's on Amazon Prime right now. And right. we're actually doing a, a sitcom pilot called Almost Made about Italian guys, but it's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's funny. So, you know, we got Jackie the Joke Man's in it. Right, right. Louis Venaria. So we got a couple of stand, one stand up comedy comic in it. And it's yeah. great. It's great to finally realize I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. Let me ask you this. When, um, how, when you were, because Harry wanted to ask you some questions because I told him you were one and he's a big fan. Oh, so, yeah. go ahead. Well, I, I mean, I, I just the, all right. So, how much. Do you get to interact with, you know, I mean, you're on the set, it's De Niro, it's Scorsese, it's Pesci and all that. And even though you're playing the younger character, you don't may, maybe you don't have scenes, but do you take anything from that or the experience? Like, what is the thing you drew most from that, that experience? Um, what did I take? I just take, like, from that experience, I'm just grateful that I was in that experience and learning from the best and just noticing how calm they were and... Just how they got into character and how it was just like, you know, it's just like real life, how to get into a scene. Mm. I remember before we did the scene, De Niro would like, before we did the scene, we'd get into the scene. So we'd talk a little right. and then boom, Marty would say action. And we were right. already in the scene. Like when we did Analyze That, I did a movie called Analyze That with mm. Robert De Niro where he hung me off a roof and we had a little fight. Right. And um, before we did the scene, he actually grabbed me and we start wrestling. Uh -huh. They said action and we were into it. So wow. I took, he, he taught me a couple of things and he directed me in a Bronx tale and he caught me and he taught me a lot of things. And, you know, grateful that I, and my second movie was with, with big shots. And I'm grateful that I got to be with those guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's three movies. with Robert What do you De think Niro? I took away from it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I don't, you know, for me, for me, all I can say is for me, the characters that I play are, are, are people that I know. So, like, I was always kind of a street dude, and so I would be, you know, I would just become a guy who I knew, and I and I just had a, I just had a lustrous street career yeah. <laughs> that I had a lot of characters to pull from. You know yeah. what I mean? And and because you you're a real dude and you know people and stuff, so you go you you take from that guy. I I didn't really have an understanding. I mean, I I guess I, I guess I was just me. For me, it was just kind of figuring it out, you know, just. Well, what just you know, good, good fellas was different only because I played somebody as a young kid, so right. I actually had to talk a little differently because they wanted me to talk. Like Joe Pesci talk. Right, right, right. They told me to say Henry, Henry, and say uh -huh. Henry. Right. And, you know, and now that I act, when I get a part, I try to do things differently. Like the TV show I'm doing Graves in, I'm playing Johnny Mad Dog Mangano. Uh -huh. I put him not as tough. Right. He's like a classy, a classy gangster. Like he's got respect. He's uh -huh. going. He dresses right. sharp. He likes the ladies. Basically, like from a different guy, like in The Brawler, I played a guy that'll rip your head off for a nickel. Mm -hmm. so I try right. to do things differently. I, I try not to do the same thing over and over. You know what I mean? Where, where were you? Where were you originally from? I'm in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Oh, so you have, I mean, so you had people to pull from. You 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 had characters in Bensonhurst. You had you had people to pull from those characters, guys that you actually knew. Well, I do my research, whatever I do. Like if I know I'm going up for a character, like I did Gotham. I watched the show. I seen how the show was. I seen it was creepy. So when I did my character, I did him a little creepy. Uh -huh. like now I'm playing the drag queen. I'm, I'm going to hang out with some drag queens. I'm going to watch some drag queens videos. You right. know, you got to put the work in. Anything you do in life, yeah. you got to put work in. You don't put work in, it's not going to happen. Right, right. When you were younger, how were you with the ladies? I was out with the ladies? I mean, I always had a girlfriend, you know? I was just telling somebody the other day, I really... Wasn't single that long. I was married. I got divorced. I had a girl for 14 years after that. You know, uh -huh. I just try to be a nice guy and try to live my life, man. Yeah. Um. You you got kids now, no? Yeah, I got a 17 year old daughter. She's wow. Going to Hunter College next year. I'm oh, excited. Congratulations, man. Yeah. Did you, Did you have to do the uh the online graduation and stuff or no? Well, we don't know yet. Right now, we're just on the wait waiting game, and we're mm. gonna see what happens. She was supposed to go away. And my daughter's great. I told her, I said, Ashley, you know, don't be discouraged. I know you graduated. She was second in her class. She was so excited to graduate and go away and all this yeah. other 
all the good stuff. Yeah. And I told her, you know, you just got to keep moving. Don't let it get you down. And she's yeah. like, don't worry, daddy. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, she's very easy going and humble. And I'm yeah. grateful for that. So do your kid, uh, does your daughter, was it a, was she enamored by the fact that you were in all these classic films and stuff? Or is she just sort of like, eh, whatever. Nah. <laughs> Not- yeah, she don't care. It's, it's no big deal. I mean, she, I mean, she, I've been acting since she was born, basically. And yeah. basically, she she knows how my lifestyle is. It's like when we're out or something, somebody will recognize me. I mean, she knows to just like be nice and, you know, chill mm-hmm. out. Don't, she just stays quiet and lets daddy handle it. You know, yeah, somebody yeah. talks to you. She's very polite and yeah. very very nice person and you know just like i tr- i am and i try to be yeah that, that i mean that's the one thing about joey i like when i first met joey just a, a really kind just a kind dude and and to watch to watch the fans like i mean it's 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 almost creepy the way his fans love him you know what i mean like and i love them too right right but it's it's i mean they're like Duh. Yeah, yeah, they are they're into it, and does that? Because sometimes uh, you know, because I'm I'm like a uh, I, I started to say a regular dude, but I <laughs> I don't know if that that no, yeah I don't think that I don't <laughs> think you're gonna get away dude. with the regular dude <laughs> label. Regular dude too. Everybody's a regular dude, man. I, I, but it's like I sometimes it it's it takes me back. When when the fans from the podcast because we got a pretty big it's, we got a pretty big following with the podcast and, and you know basically the podcast is relationship stuff and so on and so forth um, and you know which we've always been trying to help guys kind of understand the social dynamics of relationships and stuff like that and so when you affect people's lives in that way they really love you you know they love you in a real way that you don't even and, and and you know they're listening especially with your podcast and stuff because they're listening to you every day yeah. you're in their ear do you know yeah. what i mean yeah, um yeah yeah, yeah. No, and they, right. when they come to you like even like because i do one-on-one consultations and i'll i'll a guy will you know he'll he'll book something with me and i'll call him up and the first thing they do every time is like oh man i like I can't even believe I'm talking to you. You know what I mean? That yeah. kind of thing. And 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 for me, I just never wanted to be, um, like I like being a regular dude. I mean, whatever. I mean, just like a well, like I'm a, like a dude. You know yeah, like I'm, a, I'm a, right. Like I'm I'm like I don't. You know, it's nice that they feel that way, but I'm you know. I still. You know, I, I like still, you, man. They like yeah. your work. Yeah. 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 I, I'm still not used to fans coming up on occasion from the podcast. I don't get it as much as you do for sure, yeah. but it still freaks me out when people come up because usually when people go, Hey, I'm like, Oh, this is going to be a fucking problem. <laughs> like, there, was, there was one yeah, dude, I, I mean, forgot his know. name. He was a sweetheart, but it was at a, I was at, a, I was at a Walmart at like three o'clock in the morning. He goes, yo man. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I got to fight a guy in a Walmart parking lot. I don't want to do this. He's like, Oh man, you're, you're, you're Harry Turjanian, right? From from man school. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, yeah. And then all all of a sudden the demeanor changes. I'm like, yeah, yeah. my heart stops racing. I'm like, oh fuck, this is like two different fucking speeds. Put your pepper spray down. You know what? How dare you on it? Let me tell you something. You've been mocking my pepper spray for years. I never thought had... his body like a bad bitch. Go ahead, I don't bro. carry my pepper spray on me. It's on my bag to protect video equipment because I don't need to fight seven dudes like you. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, that time you got your ass kicked at that bar in Corona or whatever, that birthday oh, party where yeah, those guys buddy, stopped you out. Time, huh? They stopped Not you out for, for stepping on their sneakers or something. <laughs> no, I just accurate? bumped into somebody and the niggas started swinging. <laughs> Harry, Harry, Harry lost 40 pounds, so he, he protects his body like an Instagram model now. <laughs> Look at yeah, that. The maker. <laughs> There's almost a bicep there. <laughs> oh. It's it's a weird thing. Because, oh, let me ask you: Have your like your, your your you were married? You said you were married for like fourteen years. I was married for ten. Then I ten. Got a girlfriend for fourteen. After got a for fourteen and Love then the long term uh, relationships, huh? Wow, yeah. wow. Um, what's your what's your number, Joey? What's your number? <laughs> One eight seven six five two. <laughs> <laughs> it's did you have a did you find that that you know, women were 
uh, intimidated by the fame and by the by the people, or you know, because you you find sometimes you'll find I, I'll find that people women will like it initially, and then they'll go, you know, this is a uh, look. Yeah, they get annoyed. It's, it. it's funny you said that because I had ex a friend of mine, this girl that I know uh, about these women that I knew, and I was uh, like, you know, I don't think any women like me around here, and she's like, uh, what are you talking about? I said, I don't know. No one ever wants to talk to me. And she's like, there are a lot of women like you. I said, then how come they don't say hi to me? And they, she said, she goes, they're intimidated by you. I said, right, I'm right. intimidated by you just because I've been in a couple of movies and TV shows. I said, it's no yeah, big but it's regular it's, guy. You got it. But Joey, it says, I was looking at your IMDb. What do you got, like 100 and, 107, 106 movies you've been in? I don't know, something like that. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I mean, that's, like that. that's, a, yeah. that's a resume. Something Do you know like what I mean? Yeah, but still, it's like, they think like, I, and then I asked a couple of girls, it's like, what is it? They go, oh, we don't think you're good enough for us. We don't think we're good enough for you. And I was like, I was like, now I know why I don't get any girls. <laughs> like, come on, man, give me a chance. I'm a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. But it's that's, a, they, that, that's a thing sometimes you have to deal with when you have something that's interesting, like a career that's interesting or life that's interesting. Like even just being a stand up over the years, you have to deal with what the repercussions of that, because at first it's even if you date somebody at first, it's super exciting, like because, you know, they're intrigued by the lifestyle and all that. And then the problem is when you're away so much, it starts to wane on the relationship a little bit. You know, it's like, where are you, where are you going? Every, like, I, this is what I'm doing. And it, it's, you know, it wears out because they don't want to hang out at clubs. They're not performing. They don't get the same energy. And so anytime and you're doing social something. Media too, you know, yeah. social yeah. media kills it. Cause like I, my Facebook and my Instagram girls, write Like, Hey, handsome, beautiful, this, that, the other thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, social and media girls like, Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? I was like, yeah. oh, some fan in Australia. Uh, oh, they want you. I was like, who cares if they want me? I'm with you. They're in Australia. They got to swim over here. It's a long swim. Yeah, I'm just asking questions about Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> got to get rid of them, man. Boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you, yeah, I mean, you were in a relationship for a long time. You said it was like 14 years. You were, so, I mean. Yeah, but uh, that, was for, I, that was before Instagram, though, is what Joe was saying. Yeah, Facebook yeah, yeah. and Instagram actually ruined it. That's what actually ruined the relationship, to be honest with you. Really? really? What happened? Yeah. Is this just that? Just just the questions, just the comments and the questions like, who is that? Why are they liking your page? All that sort of stuff. Yeah, it just became nonsense. It's like, you know, if you're in a relationship, I feel like if you're like a celebrity or you got, if you got like fans and things, you just got to not even ask a question about it. I mean, if you're not, if you're not into the entertainment business and you got Facebook and you got, right. you know, girls and guys commenting on your pictures, then there's a problem, you know? Because right, right. Be entertaining a guy that you don't know or a girl that you don't know if you're with somebody, you know. Yeah, but it's it's also a lot. Like you find a lot of people. So it's it's an interesting thing. Like what a humble, what a good dude you are, and and then there's a, is a situation where you get people who are just on Facebook and then their, their celebrity is Facebook. Like they really haven't yeah. done the work to be famous. You see, when you, when you work, you know, you got a, a, over a hundred movies. That's a lot of work. Like people, like initially I didn't even really like acting because it was so tedious. Do you know what I mean? Like, so if you, you do a scene, like I'm looking at your background, you're doing that scene. People don't understand that might be three different, three to at least three camera setups, maybe more than that. Then you got to, each guy's got to talk. You got to shoot the guy talking. You got to shoot behind his head, the response and stuff. And so it's really a tedious, like when you watch it, when you watch it and it's all put together, it looks it's seamless, but it's a lot of work. I, I remember yeah. when I did I did uh I did this the the fighting movie and I gotta come down these stairs up in the Bronx. It's uh, like I'm 176th Street and I'm sitting on the stairs and then I walk down the stairs. I walked down that flight of stairs 45, 46 times. Wow. It's, up and down, up and down, and then I and then it was raining when they started it, so I was sitting in the rain, like I was my pants were wet because I'm sitting in the rain. Then when it dried up, they had to wet the stairs down so for the continuity, so that I could continue to sit in the rain the whole night. And then the fight scene was, yeah, I mean you you know you it's exhausting. I just did um 
I just did what you call it, uh, uh, Ray Donovan. Oh, nice. And uh, and uh, Terry and Ray Donovan punches me, and I I gotta go against the fence. I gotta hit the fence and then hit the ground, and then I gotta stay. But I'm literally um like 20, 30 takes of and then because because of the shot they couldn't put mats on the ground oh. so you you i had to kind of break my fall and then lay down in this state you know what i mean and 20 30 times i mean i end up you end up fucking i mean it's a lot you it, it looks great when they put it together but before that you're like what the fuck you know then you you hit the fence and you did you hit the fence you hit the fence 20 times you hit the fence it's a pain in the neck and so it's a real tedious thing until you start getting bigger parts where they treat you like they like you matter. Because yeah. when you got the little one and done, you know, you, 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 ever, you not tell you, you ever hear the story John Lake Wazama was talking about. I forget what it was, but I think uh, Sean Penn or something kicks him through a window right. or something. And then okay. like he goes, he goes, it was extra hard. I went like right through it and it was a problem. And then everyone rushes over to Sean Penn to make sure if he's okay. <laughs> make sure his foot is yeah. okay. Like, you're right. Sean, you're right. <laughs> you know what it is too, Dante? When you're doing a scene like that, I mean, you got to basically know it's, it's not only about the acting. It's yeah. about staying in the frame. It's yeah. about staying in the lighting. It's about the staying timing. the light on camera. It's yeah. about making sure you're not blocked by the other actor. Making sure the camera's on you. Because if yeah. the camera's on and it misses, like you bump into that fence and yeah. you go like this, yeah. they got to do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. But if you let's do it again. into the fence like this, all right, let's go. Move to the next one. And so then, when I the come thing to is, a set, when yeah. I come to the set, I try to come like prepared basically where two, three takes, you got the shot. Let's move on to the next thing. What the next yes. post up? What the next two shot? But that's great. Shot. That's great when you got it. When you have an actor, when you have a director who knows what he do, what he's doing and he knows what he wants. But yeah. you could you could give you, you you know there's other directors where they don't they haven't really decided what they want and they just okay try it like this they're, they're figuring it out on the fly. So um, the funny thing when I did when I did Ray Donovan they um you know you do you watch it or no? I watch, I watch, I watch Okay, so you know, Bun you know the, the character Bunchy. You know, Bun you know the young. Yeah. So Bunchy yeah. is directing. The last season he was directing. Yeah. So because he's an actor, he had a this different perspective. He was like, you know, so he was really concerned about me hitting the ground. He was trying to get the shot pretty quick, and he was trying to do because he understands what the other side of the what you know what it is on the other side of the the, the yeah. camera, you know. It's a, it, but it's it's involved. It's I mean you you think it's not involved, but it's it's really involved and it's tedious. So if you if you got a sh if you got a shitty little part, and then you don't get the perks of them taking care of you, because once you once you 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 got a decent principal part, they take care. Like you, I didn't have to I didn't have to ask for cheese eggs. You know, what I mean? like in the morning I was like, yo. You know, I, 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 where's my cheese at? Like, it, it was, so the, 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 it kind of yeah. pays off because they treat you with such, but, you know. Dante, the, the well, thing is, me, like. to be honest with you, when I get, when I get a part or I go to the set, man, I just try to be like, you know, kind and nice to everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, if yeah. I don't have time and they ask me to be a good Mr. Ginofrio, would you like some coffee? I was like, first of all, call me General Joseph. Second of all, I could get the coffee myself unless they need me in the makeup channel right, right now. Right. Right, right, right. In the makeup trailer, I said, "Can you please get me my coffee? All I need is milk." Right, 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 right. Get me right. Something, I'll be like, "Let me do the makeup, and I'll come right back." I just try to treat everybody with respect. Who did you? Who? Who? I'm, I want to see if we can get the tea. Who did you? Who treated you like a dick on set? Um, <laughs> I never really got treated like a, like a bad. To be honest with you, no. People always treated me good. I never, and if they did, I just looked the other way because you know what? These people are working fourteen hours a day. They're yeah. tired. They they they're hungry. They're aggravated. So if I get see, a little see, see you stuff, see hey, I mean, see how Joey's a sweetheart. Yeah. See, see how Joey's a sweetheart. Uh, he's a sweetheart because uh, yo Terrence Howard treated me like a fucking dick oh, the whole really? time. Wait, oh, wait, he, wait, wait. When was this? I when never you told you this. Ter no, I don't remember when you worked with Terrence Ter Howard. So when I did the fighting movie, oh so shit, I, I, I was too. He he played the um like the Promoter? fight. 
promoter, right? right? With Channing Tatum. And I, you know, like, I'm like you, Joey. I mean, you know, even the first day we met, we hit it off. It was yeah. like, you know, it was all love. And uh, so, and plus I'm a union guy. My dad was a union guy. My dad worked for the parks department. He was a union guy. I was a union guy. So, you know, right away, I, you know, I'm talking to the Teamsters. I'm talking to the stunt guys. And I, so I'm two days on set before I saw him. And I literally was like, it was, I knew everybody, the makeup people, the this, yeah. the that. And they like, they loved having me around and I'm making cracking jokes and stuff. Terrence Howard comes on the fucking, he comes on the, um, the, the scene and he's kind of like, yo, who the fuck is this guy? What? Cause I'm, I'm coming, you know, when I come on, I'm like, oh, what's up? Like, no, yeah. way, Jose, no, way, yeah. Jose. And I'm giving high fives and shit, and everybody's like, oh, Dante's here. Right? Because, you know, I'm like I'm like you. I get my own shit. You know, I'm fine. Whatever. What do you need? What, how do you mean? You want to do it again? Let's do it again. Um, because the other thing is, you know, when you do, like you said, 14, 16 hours of work, if you're a dick, like, if you're a dick, for two hours is long. Hours. Yeah. But if for you're a dick for 14 hours. hours, you won't get no work. If you're hard to work with, yeah. you won't get no work. Well, well that's what ended up happening. I don't mean, I don't know the character he was playing in the movie. I don't know if his character was like that. Joey, Joey was being I a dick. <laughs> <don't laughs> yeah, they, but, yeah but I get it if it's method acting, but it wasn't that. It, it yeah. wasn't even that. He, uh, he just didn't like the fact that the the people on the set, the, what they would call the little people, which are the people that make it happen, he just didn't like that I, I you know, I gave them, you know, you look people in the eye and you, you they want to be seen. And then I would remember names and wow. talk to, hey, how you doing? Anna? And he came on the set and he just, immediately I could feel like, you know, I, I he's like, who the fuck is this clown? Like that. <laughs> wow, and here's well. the thing. I was go ahead, Harry. What were you no, gonna I was going to say, like, his reputation. Didn't he get kicked off Iron Man? Like, there's a couple. Well, I'm, I'm going to get to that. He, oh. But I was such a fan of his because of that the movie Hustle and Flow. Like, I thought he was so fucking amazing in that movie, right? So you get these, you know how they say, don't meet your heroes. I, I, I was so happy to meet him and Mike and my mom you know my mom my mom passed away in 2016 but my mom loved him she did you know he was a cutie pie whatever and my mom was like oh Tammy Howard Tammy. and I was so I was so excited to work with the dude and he just like I, in the movie I had a girlfriend and he was punking me with my fake girlfriend so like in between scenes he would go <laughs> come here you and I'm like dude I don't even know this bitch like what are you with, with, she's Playing my girlfriend, um, and he just he just kept like giving me the business, and then I I finally went, I, you know I asked him for a picture, and I said you mind if I get a picture with you man I'm a big fan, and fuck on my face man. Then, well, he goes he goes <laughs> he goes yeah yeah sure, and just as they go to pick, take a picture he snatches a girl and puts a girl in between us, so Tell just me, some, some some random girl. I'm like all right. So we, we do the rap party, and I go up to him and I say, listen, I know you don't like me, but I just want you to know I'm a big fan. I love your work, and I'm a big fan. Oh, no, no, it's not, I don't, it's not that I'm like, nah, dog. I, like, I, I, I've been running the streets, so I know when a dude don't like me. Right. <laughs> I, I, so Which I don't know. I know the I, result when any time you go up to anybody and confront them and go, hey, man, you know, you've been real shitty. What? No, what? No, what? no, I don't know. Really? You know, what I've been I tired. I, I I, he was a dick, and then like like Harry said, you you get knocked off the Avenger movies. Oh, like, man. how do you fuck that up? Like, you know, he was playing um, uh, War Machine. Well, not War, I want to say War Machine. Uh, what's the, the the Iron Man that Don Cheadle plays? I forget. Now? War um, Machine. Was it War Machine? Yeah. So he he. So I guess he thought he was so big that he could be a dick and not. And yo, they they replaced him. He, they didn't even try to get a dude that looked like him. <laughs> that was like, get the fuck out of here. And how do you blow and the Don Avenger Cheadle, movies? I mean, owns probably several beach houses now. From oh, all gosh, that, that shit. And just by being a, and, and Joe, you know, it's like just by being a good dude, like a righteous dude, people want to work with you. 
You know, yeah. they, they want to work with you. Yeah, but that's, yeah. Dante, that's a lesson in just real life in general. Like, yeah, yeah. Just, there's no need to ever be a dick. You don't have yeah. talent is hard. Like, you know, skill, that's hard. But being nice, all you, it's easy. You can be know, shitty like, you know, and be nice. Funny? It's funny that you say that story because I worked with an actor once. I'm not going to mention his name, but he was very like nasty to me on the set. Right. And um, and I said to myself, I was like, "Wow, this guy's really nasty." <laughs> I was like, "Let me play for this guy that he changes his ways." Yeah. And you know, I don't know. Like a couple of years later, I was at a party, and the same actor was like across the room comes over to me, he's like, "Hey, Joey, how you doing? What's going on?" Long right. time to see. How's the family? How's everybody? He was so nice to me. Right. And I said to myself, I was like, wow, I thought this guy was a knucklehead. Right, right. But then I thought to myself, I watched the movie again, and he, we really didn't interact in the movie, and our characters weren't supposed to really like each other. Oh, so he was method. He was a method like actor. He was into the role. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Sometimes when I'm working with other actors, I try not to like, get too personal or talk to them about different things because I know I'm on the set and I know they're working and I know maybe they got a lot of dialogue in their mind. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I try to keep it simple. If they talk to me, I'll be like, hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. And then I wait for them and I and I see what I do after that. Did you know? Oh, you know, you know who was like, notorious? I worked with too, where like I worked the first two days with them where they were like quiet. They didn't say a word to me. Right, and right. The third day, they're like, hey, Joey, how you doing? Because basically a lot of actors, they don't know if you talk to them, you're going to go to like the Star Magazine. You're going to okay. go to the MC. You're right. going to write a book. You're going to do this. Or they don't know if you're trying to brown nose them to get the next part. Or right. Because like, so many people are up there junk or just yeah. want to be their friends for the wrong reasons. So well, you know, the De Niro. Out. They're actually trying. You know, sometimes it's hard being not famous because you don't know. You know what people want from you. So yeah, yeah. even like well, me sometimes when people approach me, I'm yeah. like, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, what are these people trying to do? You know. Yeah. But I try to you know be positive about every situation I'm in and anybody that comes up to me. I try to just make an experience. But, you know, yeah. in the back of my head, I'm always thinking, what's going on? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, but like I I know De Niro when De Niro did um. So you what never know, you might the, bounce into Terrence yeah. Howard one day, and he's yeah, like, I don't, 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 I don't think so because he, he, he it was because uh, I, you know, I confronted him at the rap party, and it was like you, he knew what it was, and I knew it. I was like, come on, dog. I mean, but my, I remember when I, I remember reading that De Niro when did what was the movie that De Niro did with uh, Cuba Gooding where he was in the um radio, you know, he played this no, racist. No, he played this racist in, um, and Cuba Gooding was one of the, the first black uh, I know what you deep mean. sea I don't divers. Know the name, but, the I name. Yeah. but it was supposed to be at a time when there was a lot of racial tension, and he did not talk to Cuba until the character changed, till the, till the, in the story, because he's, he's, method, he's a method actor, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's how he and is. I, and I get that, but. But our our character wasn't like that. It wasn't like that, and and it just and it was just and and I'm not a guy. I mean, you know, I mean, you've been around me. I, I don't. I'm not a pushy dude. I don't want. I don't want to. You know, I've had. You know, like even like I I came up not directly, but I came up with Kevin Hart, and you know, Kev is huge now. Yeah. And but so I he was outside the club, and I was like, hey, Kev, right just to speak because I didn't want to be somebody who didn't speak to somebody who I knew and he stopped the interview to come to come over and say hey bro hey he was like excuse me one second he was like what's up brother gave me a hug and stuff and it was like he he's that kind of guy and you don't realize how much that the sincerity of that counts in the real thing now yeah. Pat Patrice Patrice was an asshole to people all the time and Patrice was an asshole to his own friends <laughs> Yeah, he was, asshole. <laughs> he was an asshole to the people who were closest to him. So he right, you know, just before he passed, he had got his own show, right? Patrice got his own show, and uh, and and he was casting it, right? It never, it never, the show never came out, but he was casting it, and he comes, he comes home one day, like he's like it's one of those sixteen-hour days, and he goes, 
you know, I realize uh, when you're working 16 hours with somebody, you'd you'd rather work with somebody who's nice than 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 somebody who's talented and an asshole. Yeah. And I go, really? You, you think people like nice people better? <laughs> that was <laughs> like his big <laughs> revelation that he had just figured <laughs> out. You know, it occurred to me. It occurred to me. You're nice. You're people nice. Like you. You, people like you when you're it's, nice. It's better. <laughs> and he was like, he said, because he said there were guys, there were guys who were more talented, but they were just assholes. And he'd rather take the less talented person because, when, like you said, when you when you when you're doing 16 hours, 14, 14, 16 hours, man, it's it's hard to stay nice for 14 to 16 hours. I mean, even if you're a nice guy, but if you start off a douchebag. Oh, that's it's the worst. And he was like, you know, I realized whenever I do, um, because he was on the, you know, he was on the office, and he said to me, he said to me, yeah, that's that's Steve Carell's show. That's not my thing. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like the opportunities. That, and I said, I said, the, your revelation is that being a nice guy. It, people like you I go, took you took you to be 40 years old and know where you were on the other side of the camera cast and to know that it's just easier to work with, people who are easier to work with are gonna they're, they're gonna work with you more and more you know you when you're agreeable you don't want a headache or anything like that yeah, it's the a, other thing is people always think that being nice means you're a pushover and that's the that's the big misconception, like just not even just about acting, but in life in general, even in an yeah. office environment, it's OK to be nice. It doesn't mean you're a pushover. It's the same thing in relationships. Yeah. Well, it's interesting what, what 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 Joey said is, look, the minute you start asking me about Facebook and eh, see you so long because this is because you can see down the road that it's going to be a problem. You know, yes. and you know that this is going to be a problem. It's not going to get better. Yeah. But a lot of times people will will they will discount their manhood and what they what they like and what they don't like because they think be, and and then you find that people guys do that because they don't think that they're worthy in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, uh, there's a I don't know if you ever seen that IKEA commercial the IKEA commercial where the lady is running to the parking lot with the bags and she goes, Harold, start the car, right? And it's the the point is that the 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 IKEA is so cheap that she feels like she's robbed them. But, you know, she paid for everything and everything she's going, but she feels like it's so cheap that she's robbed them. And the thing about it is, um, you know, if you're a guy and you're in a situation and you think that the woman that you're with, you're not, that you're out of your league, if you think you're out of your league and you're not worthy, then inside you, you feel like you're stealing. You know what I mean? Deep down, you're, you're in a situation that you don't deserve to be in in the first place, you know? But you'll find that guys won't work to be, uh, guys won't work to be worthy either. Like, so it's like, it's easy, you know, it's almost like you, you got over 100 movies under your belt. Um, it, you, it's, it's your job. It's what you do. Um, it's what you love doing. But you're also not going, look at me, everybody. I got a hundred yeah. moves. Like, even he goes, hey, I did a few things, this, that, and the other. And then yeah. when you look at your, you know, when you look at your IMDb, you're like, holy shit. Like, yeah. but because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're always looking, what's the next thing? Well, yeah, yeah I, I got this. You got to keep working, you know? And, and what's the next thing? And what else can I do? And how can I be better? And when you're focused on that, you're, you, you're just not worried about what other people think. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not worried about what other people think. That's what I do too. I try to look for the next thing and just try to stay positive, man. Especially now with what's going on, you know, we're all shut down. Yeah. I was like two projects I was supposed to do, but it's all shut down right now. But what were you working on? What were you working on? Well, Gravesend, we did four uh -huh. episodes of that. It's on Amazon Prime right now. We got six more we're supposed to do. Oh, nice. So you, you got slated for ten the whole season. Yeah, and then basically this thing almost made the pilot. Yeah. And, and um, I just finished Birthday Cake with Val Kilmer. So that was good. That's in the can. I got right. this other thing in the can called, um, uh, well, I forgot the name of it. Uh, something with uh, J Judy San Roma. Uh, what was the name of it? It was. Uh, Let me see. I'll look it up. We'll get it. There we go. it the wrong path. The wrong okay. path. The yeah, wrong yeah. path. Yeah. It's really good, man. The wrong path is going to be. Off the hook with Thomas yeah. Powell, man. Oh, 
I played Bruno. In the wow. I, I didn't even look at like this. You, man. I played a tough guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all I get. I'm always throwing somebody in a dumpster. <laughs> I want that's you to my... throw me in a dumpster one day. In a <laughs> That'd be great, man. I would love for you to throw me in the dumpster. I was thrown in the dumpster in the Black Donnelly's. They killed yeah. me. In that. It was like, Oof. Uh, you ever been yeah. in a dumpster, man? Dead? Uh, I, I'm usually the guy throwing the guy in the dumpster. I've never been in the dumpster. I was like, dumpster, 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 the dumpster. Yeah. In a dumpster. I mean, I've been in the dumper too. I've been in a, in a few dumpers. <laughs> but they kept the, me uh, there for like an hour too, man. It was stinking in there. Yeah, always oh, like they didn't even have a good dump. It was a shitty, like a real dumpster. Like they didn't, they didn't yeah, have I'm like it. Uh, set, oh wow, wow, that's kind of yeah, fucked up. up. If you want the, to uh, you'll see. He picks it up. You know, one of those things where you pick it up. He picks yeah, yeah, it up, yeah, yeah. He looks in, and I'm in there, and then he shuts it. Yeah. You know how to wait for them to do their dialogue, and then they say cut. So they had like a minute of dialogue, two minutes of dialogue. So I'm in there, for two right. minutes. You know. And you got to stay in there because it, it's like yeah. 90 degrees yeah. outside. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did this thing where um. I was like uh, the muscle for this drug dealer, like this crystal meth drug dealer. And uh, the, the, the guy from uh, Outlaw, the, the series Outlaw, I forget his name, but we, he's got us, he's torturing us in the basement, right? So they got us tied up, gag, bound and gag in this basement. And he's taking the, 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 the you know, the, the gun and he's putting it to our head and he's, he's taught, you know, pistol whipping us and all kinds of stuff. And we're tied up and you, you, you know, you, you gotta kind of, they gotta tie you. They, they can't fake tie you up. They gotta tie you up yeah. because it's, yeah. it's gotta be real. Yeah. And uh, man, a couple of times, like the, the gag, like they had a, 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 like they put a sock in your mouth and a gag and like it would real, you know, it gets real. Yeah, the, yeah. the kid, there was this kid from um, Australia that was playing the lead. He, so we, we go on break and he's tied up. And I mean, we're sweating and this, this is going on take after take. A yeah. couple of hours we're working on the different cuts and this and that. We go on break. He goes, now nah, I'll, I'll stay here. <laughs> like, cause he didn't want to get out of the mode of, 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 you know, the, the, the stress of the, the, the scene. Yeah. And we went and they, Lunch and he stayed in the basement tied up, and I was like, yeah, I was crazy. I mean, I've been beaten, I mean, I've had scratches, I've had cuts, I've been bruised up. But you know, what are you gonna do? You did, you know, it's part of the job sometimes, just keep it moving. Yeah, and you get paid well, you know, yeah, when you get so, when yeah. you get the check, you're like, mm, all right, I put on fire once, that was pretty cool. Really, they put the suit on you and the gel and everything. They, yeah, they put the gel, not a suit, but actually the clothes. Uh -huh. It was all gelled up, and they put me on fire for like a minute or two. It was, it was kind of fun. That's a nice, that's a nice check. That's a <laughs> nice, <laughs> that's a nice check. I always, you, know, you got to do, I always had to do my, my own stunts because they didn't have stuntmen that with my body type. So it was like, uh, so, and you know, you get to the point where you're willing to do whatever, but it, you, it, it's, you show up and it's also, you had the same problem that like Judy Gold would have where right. they'd be like, all right, you know what, uh, why don't you bring your own clothes? <laughs> Just bring your own clothes for wardrobe. Dude, I, I did, be uh, uh, they did a they did a series of um called Limitless. Yeah, uh, with, you know, remember the movie yeah. Limitless? And they yeah. did the series. Yeah. So I go I go to the series. I go in right, and you know I have all my I usually wear all my jewelry out when I'm out. You know I haven't had my jewelry on since the COVID, but I go in there with a leather jacket, some boots, my jewelry and stuff, and they go, oh. Uh, wardrobe came already, huh? <laughs> and I ended up just nice, walking on set with my with my clothes, you know. Good. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a weird thing. Joe, what's um, your experience like being being a dad with all this stuff? Like, not the showbiz part, but you know, like what what how have you how did you find being a dad? What are the some I love of the it. yeah? I love it. It's great. Yeah, it's best thing in the world. Yeah, it seems it seems bizarre to me. Like I, I know that there's these high moments. I see people with kids and they enjoy the high moments because I'm always debating it myself at some point. But there's also like the crazy lows. I mean, you have a teenage daughter. That's got to have been a little bit. Even the best teenage daughter, it's it's a little scary for a dad, no? Well, it's a lot of work. I mean, basically, 
I, as she was a kid, I mean, I talked to my daughter about everything. And basically, I really don't tell my daughter what to do. I just basically give her suggestions. And I tell her the ins and the outs and the rights and the wrongs. And, you know, I try to lead her on the right path. I tell her the wrong friend or wrong boyfriend will yeah. ruin your life forever. Yeah. I teach her how to say no. And yeah. I teach her to be her own person. I teach her to be independent. Ever since right. she was a baby, I remember telling her to hang out on the couch and chill out for like 10, 15 minutes and do her own thing. Since she was a baby, I've been teaching her independence. And, you know, she, she, she's very independent. I'm very lucky with her. She's really good. But, Dante, right. you were very independent, and you started banging it like uh, seven and a half, right? What do you mean? Oh, I mean yeah. Yeah, I was 11. I was 11. 11. But but it was, you know, it's a weird, you know, like I always say, I was hanging out with older dudes. And they, and, and old, but when I say older dudes, like I was 11 and they were, I was like 10, 11, and they were like 17, 18. And what you don't realize is 17, 8 year old, 18 year old dudes, they don't do nothing but lie on their dick. That's all no, they ever do is lie on their dick. And so I was 11 and I was looking up to these guys at 17 years old. And they and I was eleven years old, and they said, "I remember this one of the, one of the dudes said, "Look, if you do not go down on your girl, she can be taken." <laughs> now I'm a, I'm eleven years old, right? I got this little girlfriend. Uh, I mean, say eleven years old is what grade? Uh, that's got to be eighth grade or seventh grade, something, some ridiculous. Like, what was it five? Eleven? I don't even 11. know if you're. Eight, five, five, five would be years like old, sixth grade or six or sixth seven, grade, sixth, sixth grade. grade so I'm a, I got this little girlfriend, and I'm trying to convince her that I should go down on her because I don't want her to leave me, right? With her little, her little sixth grade pissy panties, right? <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like trying to, I'm trying to figure out, and I'm like, we no, you got that's they told me. Um, later on, I found out that the guys who were advising me. They were all virgins. None of them had gotten laid. They had no experience at all. Everything that they had learned about women, they learned from porno. And, uh, and, and they were filtering it through me. And I just, I took it as, I took it as the truth. In all fairness, that advice does hold up if you don't it go does. down. It does. Oh, it is true. Yeah, if you do not will, go down on your woman, she you. will leave you. She yeah. will leave you. <laughs> whatever else happens, whatever happens, you know, you better go down. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, my daughter was always good, man. I, I remember, like, playing tricks on her, too. Like, I'd be in the car, and I'd have one of my friends call me up and told me, say, like, my friend called me up. He's like, hey, Joe, uh, what are you doing? I was like, oh, not much. Just hanging out, hanging out, relaxing. He's like, oh, my daughter met this friend, and, you know, she's off the hook. She's doing bad in school. I don't know what to do. I'm trying to get my daughter in shape. I'm trying to make her be good. Uh. But the messing her up. And I'd be like, oh, dude, I don't know what to tell you, man. You got to tell, tell her to stay away from bad people. It's not good. Right, and then right. I'd hang up the phone with my friend. I wouldn't even say nothing to my daughter. Right, right. My daughter would be listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she'd be like, oh, wow. I don't want to be like that. I got to watch right. I gotta watch the friends I make. You got yeah, yeah. to trick these kids sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You can't tell them what to do because if you tell them, do this, they're going to they're gonna be like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do something else. Yeah, yeah. I, I would tell my daughter, like, I remember there was an after school program. I was like, Ashley, you know, you should do that after school program. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. She's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that, daddy. Uh, and then like, two weeks later, I call up my ex wife. Hey, what's Ashley up to? Oh, she's at the after school program. Yeah, yeah. But I don't go and tell my daughter, see, I told you so. I just don't even yeah. bring it up. Right, 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 right. Because how did you, how did you, how was the, the breakup with your ex wife? How did that work? And how did that, how did you make that cordial? And that transition, I mean, you know, because sometimes that's hard. And, um, and and the reality is that just sometimes, you know, I, I always say, you know, I, I say this all the time, relationships are really easy. You just have to decide what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiate them. Yeah. And just because this is what you want now, there comes a time where people grow apart and they, and they want different things. Um, was the, the divorce amiable or did, was it difficult or, or did it, you know, it sounds to me now like it's, it's amiable and you kind of, uh, you co-parent and you kind of understand where you're coming from. Was it always like that or, or no? No, in the beginning it was a little rocky, but you know, I just, I just said, you know, whatever they want, whatever you want, you want, that's it. Yeah. Well, what do you want? You want it? No, you whatever, you know, you just, you just got to make them, you know. Yeah, but well, I mean, you also the kid. The kid was most important to you. I mean, you you look like you really, and so you wanted that to be the. But you, you know, you find a lot of times, you know, like 
you know, you split up with people and people use the children to get back at you because they know that they can. If they can't affect you in certain ways, did you, you know, did you, how do you, how did you find a way to kind of resolve that in a real way? Or just, did you just not engage it at all? Well, what I do did basically in the beginning is, you know, I asked her what she wanted and she, she, we, we made up the papers and I was like, okay. And I, and I get my daughter every other weekend and, you know, I just got her every weekend. I showed up for every parent teacher night, showed mm -hmm. up for my daughter whenever she needed anything and just whatever my ex-wife said, we just talked about it like human beings. We were adults about it. It didn't right. work out, but you know, we had to do the right thing for the kids. And, was you know, she, was she mature kid. enough? Was she mature enough to do that or was she? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you got lucky. But, I mean, you know, I've seen – I mean, we've all seen situations where people do those divorces and it's just – like, I get calls about that all the time where where the, where the person is really being selfish in terms of they're not, they're not lifting the kid up. You know what I mean? Well, basically, the, you know, me and my ex-wife were always cool. Like, you know, it was supposed yeah. to be every other week. But it's like if you, if you couldn't get him one week, no problem. Get him next week. You know right. – you can pick them up at 12. You had to be there at 1 or 11. No problem. You know, we were always good like that. I basically, because just the way I think, the way I deal with situations, right. I just try to be a nice guy and I'm kind about things. And we, you know, we went right. to counseling and we tried to work it out. It didn't work out. Yeah. You know, sometimes when things don't work out, you just got to keep it moving, you know? People change. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's a great person. How? She's a great lady, you know? Right. Just she didn't work. It. Just did you know you guys didn't work. How old was your daughter when you when you got divorced? Two. Two years old. Wow. So, wow. So, and and when the whole process was done at about what time? Well, what like do you mean? two. So two years old. You, you you were completely divorced by two. By the time she was two. Yeah, something like that. Pretty close to that. So it kind of so she was too young to really understand. So the way it is now is kind of the way it always was. Yeah, so she didn't really have to get used to like anything. She, yeah, yeah. Everything was like easy. It's like when you divorce that early, it's easier for the kid, I guess. Yeah. They get then it's not like she was ten and it's like boom, daddy yeah. and mommy living together. When I picked right. her up the first time, she really only said like daddy. You know, she really didn't even talk. She didn't know what was going on really. Yeah, it's difficult when the kid is 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 heavily, you know, is a, is a product of the marriage that's been going on for some time, and then yeah. and then all of a sudden you're not there, and that you know it's kind of a you know it's it's a shock for them, you know. It's, it's, it's all it's, how you it's, deal with it too. It's all how you you talk to your kid about the situation. I'm an open book yeah. with my daughter. I tell her anything. I've been talking to my daughter about drugs, alcohol, sex, anything since she's like yeah. ten years old. I remember her telling me, "Daddy, I'm ten. I was like, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather I talk to you about it than you right. learn on your own. Because if you learn on your own, you're not going to know, you know, what's going to happen. So I want right, to Right, you right, right. You if you learn well, on your own, you're going to run into a bunch of virgins. Before that guy says, I want to go down on you, I want you to know, <laughs> you know, why he wants to go down on you or, or what, what, why or, or, do or, it? or what, or what is going down on? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, what is his intention? Does he want to go down and take care of you? And is he the best guy? Is he going to school? Is he doing yeah. the right thing? Is he a, is he a drug dealer? Is he a thug? Or yeah. is he a nice guy? I try to teach her. That's the most important part in life sometimes. Your yeah. Partner. And if you don't my, partner, my parents, my parents uh, didn't handle their divorce particularly well at all. <laughs> And we were not children. We were fully grown adults. Wild for the night. <laughs> my mom did. My mom was wild for the night before and after. Um, oh, wow. But they proceeded. My mom oh. thought the best, the best way to parent. Tell the story, a Harry. Tell the story. <laughs> oh, my God. The, my mom felt the best way was to uh, claim that my father was a crossdresser based on no information, <laughs> which I guess is a Hispanic woman thing to do, which is immediately attack the masculinity of the Your father. He's, he's a gay. I'm like, what? When did this happen? <laughs> he, and then also at the same time, he gave me the herpes. Your father gave me the herpes. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know which parenting book you read, mom, but this doesn't seem like out of any you know of them. Oh my she god! Didn't, she didn't understand if he gave her the herpes. She's saying that she had the herpes. She didn't. She, she didn't, didn't get, get that part. The <laughs> she didn't understand. 
somehow he gave it to her. And then I, so then I have to ask my dad, he's like, I don't, what the fuck is she talking about? No, I don't have, <laughs> if I have it, she has it. And neither of us has it. <laughs> That's oh, funny. Uh, she's wild for the. She's so wild. wild. She's off the night. She's she off was, the hook. Well, she was the one I ended up catching when I came home. That's how I, they ended up getting divorced. Your divorce was nice and amicable, Joe. My my parents' divorce was me coming home and catching my mom. Uh, basically, there was a dude in her closet that I had to like, wow. like one of the handymen working on like some construction thing we were doing, <laughs> and then I. Then I opened the, she didn't want me to check it in. I went in, I opened the closet and I see like some guy cowering hey, in the you? corner. Like he's scared some Guatemalan dude. And so I don't know why I was just so in shock that I just shut the, I slid the closet door back close. <laughs> you closed it back. Yeah, like you like, it. As if I was like, and then I was going to open it back up as if I was doing a magic trick. Like there's no way I just saw <laughs> what, your mom what I saw. My mom he's acted. My mom was like, I don't even remember the craziness of what she she said because she's so fucking nuts that she was saying, "Oh, it, it wasn't a thing. It was we thought your father was coming home and your father's crazy." And it was all about my dad being crazy <laughs> because my mom is mentally ill and I love her to death, but she's mentally ill. Yeah. She's crazy. So Ugh. then that was up to me to inform my dad of what was going on, which is a tough task cuz he's working. I'm like, "When do I tell him?" I when do I tell, tell him? him that when do I tell him he's crazy? And the only way to yeah. cure that is to have a Guatemalan in his in his boxes in the closet. That oh I mean that God. works out. Yeah, it it um, it's you effective. know, it, it, yeah, it is effective. But the, the the thing is also that you know when you stay in those relationships, when you stay in relationships that are bad, what you're doing basically is you're teaching your daughter or your son to put up with this kind of unhappiness. So a lot of times I'll get guys, oh, I'm, you know, I stayed together for the kids. Now, if you stay together for the kids you, and you're fighting and you're arguing every day, what also happens is now this is what they're seeing. And so you're teaching them that in their relationships that this behavior is acceptable, that fighting and all that craziness is acceptable, which is, which is why Harry's a comedian. That's right. <laughs> That's how I end up. On this fucking podcast, <laughs> because I think it's acceptable to throw uh, spaghetti against the wall. That's how. <laughs> how else do you? How else Christmas do you solve dinner? an argument, right? Uh, how right. else do you? Yeah, that's the that the, the whole thing is. Yeah, you're you're all that stuff. It, it had the opposite effect on me for a long time. It, it messed me up because I was anti um, confrontational. Uh, to the point where, like, if you brought me the wrong order at a restaurant, I would just be like, "Well, I guess I'm just, fucking, just, I you, guess I'm eating shrimp." I got a, I got a shrimp allergy, but I'm eating right. shrimp today. Yeah, Somebody give me an epidermis. Like uh, what? Well, yeah, <laughs> basically, and all because I'm like, I don't want to create any controversy. I don't want to create any problems because I'm used to my mom and dad screaming at a deli counter <laughs> in public, or you know, that that's how they handle shit. I'm like, oh, so you either end up being that thing. Yeah, you end up uh, continuing the chain, or you do the opposite, which is you try to avoid that entirely. Yeah. So now I'm the only one in my my of my family that is just quiet and uh, and the rest of the family's out of their fucking mind. Every single one of them, but that's how they communicate, and that's why I can't live there like most of the time. Mm. It's, I had to I had to take like a ten year hiatus from that, where I was like, I need a break from this. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll come back. I'm like, no, you don't you don't understand. You motherfuckers are crazy. Are like, yeah, it's and funny because. People I used like to each love other. seeing people like your mother and father at the deli, and I'd yeah. be with my daughter, and we'd yeah. just be like, me and my daughter would look at them and start, everything was a learning experience with her. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I'd yeah. say, look at those people. Look at, okay. look at them. And none yeah. would get done. When you act like that, the yeah. store don't do anything for you. Yeah. And then me yeah, and my yeah. daughter walk up to the people and to the deli counter, like, hey, how you doing? How's your day going? Yeah. Good. Ready to for the same thing. Your mother and father asked for that they didn't get, and then we get it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Joey, yeah. Well, man, a learning experience for me too. Yeah, Joey, <laughs> man, thank you so much for doing this, man. I appreciate you, man. I can't wait till we, we, um, you know, we get things get back to normal. We get back on stage, and you know, I can up see New you. York, baby, we gotta do it. Yeah, we got you got that show coming up. We're gonna I don't know. We don't have a date yet, but we're working on it, right? No, well, I got the Zoom, my Zoom comedy show. Is, That's July okay. 25th. But Stand July. Up New York wants me to do a show there. Okay. 
But right now, nothing's going on. So I mean, yeah, we got to see what it is. It's gonna, you know, it's, you it, at least you kind of feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel now. At least it kind of feels that way, unless you know, unless everything goes to shit. But who knows what the fuck? Who knows what's gonna happen? They got to start opening up and. Just let's let's just open it up and see what happens. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually yeah. lost. I I lost like eleven people, like oh, coworkers and family. So it's like, you know, I mean, I'm 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 I got mixed feelings about it. But Joey, man, thank you so much for doing this. Um, what uh, t- tell me about the Amazon Prime so that they could the, the show that you have on. What's the name of it again? Gravesend. Gravesend, and you got the uh, you got your Zoom thing that you're doing when. July 25th. July 25th, cool. It's global. Okay. All you right. Can watch it in the corner of your house on your couch. And I'm, <laughs> at, Joe, I'm at Joseph D'Onofrio Official on yeah. Instagram and Joseph D'Onofrio on Facebook. You better follow me if you're Spell watching. Spell it, Joey. Spell it so they can, they can follow you. J O S E P H D O N O F R I O. Okay. Official. All right, Joey. Thank Joey you, man. Who's doing this is gonna probably have it on the bottom as yeah. a link or something. Oh, else. he has it. He has it there. He's it's there. I just wanted he's to make sure you get it. The, yeah, he's got the, the he's link. got he's got the full yeah, name on the bottom. So with the link uh, and everything. Uh, Dre, talk to me. Yo, just follow me Instagram, Twitter, Andre D Times, and that's it. Just stay safe. Y'all don't gotta hear me. All right, Harry, talk to me. Uh, all my social media at Harry Turjanian, and also follow Catalyst Wrestling on YouTube. Uh, we're gonna be doing some new episodes, and uh, we might be doing something real soon. Uh, okay. So check it out. Okay, everything oh. with me is uh, oh. good. Also, the YouTube page for this show. If you want to watch full episodes of this show, we have them on YouTube now, uh, current and classic episodes. So please like and subscribe. Uh, to please the YouTube check that channel because we have some great content coming and comment too please that helps us too yeah uh, absolutely uh, you know everything with me is uh, Facebook and Twitter everything is Dante Nero Instagram is the T-H-E the Dante Nero um, follow me on Instagram uh, I got a bunch of stuff up on uh, that I'm putting some more comedy and stuff up also uh, GYBB get your balls back WWDD what would Dante do the sexual revolution is being podcasted Yo, I love y'all. Also, if you want to book time with me, you can book time with me at uh, at uh, DanteNero.com and click on consult. You can book with me. And I've also been doing on Facebook, I've been doing uh, writer's work, comedy writer's workshops and stuff coming up. Um, I got one this Saturday and I got one. I do them every other week and where I help, you know, teach, give you the shortcuts with your stand up and the kind of intensify it yo i love y'all if you like what we're doing please like and share all that good shit i love y'all we are out man thanks yo thanks joe you're the best bro